What's good YouTube, Warstorm here, coming at you guys with another video today. I decided to do this video instead of the other original plans I had, which was to bring you guys releases for the rest of the year, because quite frankly, the video didn't really have my quality standards. So it took a little bit of extra time to kind of plan this video out for you guys. And so, you know, because I want to bring you guys quality at the end of the day. I don't want to, I don't want to bring, put out a video, just video just to put out a video i want to bring you guys something you guys actually want to enjoy and actually it's informative and actually you guys want to watch so a lot of the way we'll go ahead and get into it so the topic of today's video is actually dexter just won't die and will continue to stay viable pretty much till the end of time bear in mind this is not counting decks that kind of continually receive support and can you just quote not die these are decks that kind of tend to be decent decks no matter when you play them they're things they do tend to last will probably the decks will be decent pretty much till the end of time at least so with all that out of the way we'll go ahead and get to the first deck which is actually mermails mermails are actually a deck that has been hanging around for a very very long time one of my buddies who i go to locals wix actually got his nats qualifier in in spiral format playing blind going second mermail and ever since neptibus is released while the deck hasn't been super you know, it doesn't. It's always tops here and there. The fact is, the engine of cards like cards like Dragoons, cards like Teus, cards like Neptibus are almost cards like Megalo. These cards are almost completely immune to power creep, just because of how much, how good, and it just shows how power good and powerful the Mermail engine is as a whole. There's been variants that have seen the OCG playing Light Seca, which is an incredibly powerful card for the deck because you play mostly monsters anyways. There's just so many, like, this is an engine. This deck can both go first and go second, which is always a strong suit for any deck if it can do both. And it just has an... Ne Neptibus is just an incredibly powerful card. Now, granted, the deck does have a lot of flaws. You know, if you have any kind of graveyard disruption, the deck really struggles. And if... It is a pretty lin linear deck in terms of you really need to resolve Neptibus, but nevertheless, it is a pretty, very strong deck. The engine as itself has proven to be good over multiple formats, and I don't can't really ever see a time where Neptibus and Teus and his pals will not, you know, be a decent, you know, deck to pick up just because it happens to be a decent call. But anyways, with all that being said, I think Mermails are definitely, definitely one of the five decks I think that pretty much will be good, a good call to make until the end of time. The next deck actually is Medulce. So this seems like an odd call. I understand, you know, a lot of you guys are probably like saying, but Aura, the, Mer the Medulce link's not very good. You know, the deck, you know, it's not, definitely not. Well, hear me out for a minute. The biggest thing with Medulce is because is some of their key cards are so strong, you can pretty much live off of what those cards do. Card cards like um, Medulce Angeli, cards like Medulce Queen Tiramisu, uh, Magdalene. Overall, the core the core of of Medulce is is very strong with Hoot Cake uh, as well. It's just a good deck, and Tiramisu. Being able to spin two cards without targeting is a very, very hard mechanic to power creep. The biggest thing is Medulce's as a whole are, because the engine you do play of Medulce's is very small, it's very accommodating to playing other engines. Cards like Lone Fire Blossom and Preta Plant Orphus Scorpio really do help to contribute and Brilliant Fusion as well. They just enable the deck to do uh, make the transition a lot better than a lot of other decks. And as I said earlier, Medulce Queen Tiramisu is a card that is nearly immune to power creep. It's just, it's a, it is a shame that, you know, you can't play a, this deck more pure, but the core cards in the deck are so good that I think you can pretty much play Medulce's till the end of time simply because of how good our girl here, Tiramisu, is. So the next deck on the list is actually Paleozoic. So this is among this list. This is one of the ones that's actually managed to snag tops at the W at the North American WCQ. Paleozoic as a mechanic, it, while it's not the most fun deck to play against, definitely it's always a deck that's kind of going to be good simply because of a because it is a very while it is a very trap land deck. Totally awesome is always going to be a really really strong card. Being able to float into traps is as Mechanically speaking, Paleozoic is a very, while it is a very slow deck, it's a very hard to power creep what the deck does, and the fact that there's so many good, you know, engines and draw cards that can fit into the deck. It's just a really flow, it's the way the deck can grind is just very, very hard to power creep as a mechanic. So I do think that Paleozoics, you know, are a deck that's gonna, that's while it's not, you know, always going to be top tier, as long as there's not, as, 
as long as we don't aren't in a format where we have like a super heavy boss monster, this deck is going to be good. And it is still managing to do well despite, you know, maybe Alter Guides being the better anti-meta deck. It's a deck that I think just mechanically, because of cards like Totally Awesome, can last quite a can have a pretty long lifespan in terms of how long it will be a decent deck to play and be good. It, mechanically speaking, it's not the most fun deck to play with, I understand, but it's definitely a deck that I think, you know, can last through, you know, several different formats and still be something you can just pick up and play and not totally be screwed. The next deck on the list is actually Pendulums, namely, maybe mostly talking about Pendulum Magicians, but in general, I feel like, well, Pendulum Magicians have had so much adaptation over the past few years, just judging by the sheer number of, like, of different ways people have built had to build the deck to the ban list. And it's proven that the, the Pendulum Magician engine as a whole is so strong that despite the hits to cards like Astrograph Sorcerer and Double Iris Magician and Joker, the engine as a whole is still really strong. Pendulum, I feel like Pendulum Magicians in general and Pendulums as a whole are, are very, because there's so many cards that can get to Electromite and because Electromite is so strong, it's very difficult for me to see a point where you couldn't just pick up a Pendulum deck for like 30 bucks with Electromites you know, whenever it's reprinted, you know, and not, you know, totally. Now, obviously, Pendulums have this inherent problem where without Astrograph Sorcerer, it is very difficult for the for the deck to recoup the things that it, to get it get a lot of advantage. It's it while well, the deck can set up crazy boards, it doesn't have that recoverability that Astrograph enabled. But nevertheless, you know, I can't really see a time where Pendulum Magicians would not be something decent, simply because the deck is a very it's a very flexible and, and and deck available to adapt to whatever is going on. It's very flexible in terms of how you build it. So that's one of the reasons why I think Pendulum Magician is one of those decks that's going to just be able to hang around simply because, not just because of Electromite, but because of how well the deck can adapt to, you know, and whatever happens to be going on in the format. Then lastly, but certainly not least, we have Cyber Dragons. This is a deck that I know a lot of you guys are probably thinking, oh, this deck's, you know, been... How can you think this deck is going to be, you know, stay, always be able to stay semi-relevant and be something you can pick up and play? Well, I just think that mechanically, because of the way this deck is inherently breaks boards, I don't think there'll be a time where it is absolutely horrible. Look at right now, for example, you have a mega, you have a simple Cyber Dragon can, you can literally, Cyber Dragons can break an entire extra link board with literally two cards. They need a Cyber Dragon and either Eltonin or something to search Eltonin. If you open either of those cards, you can break basically any board, and that in of itself is very difficult to power creep in terms of card design. You know, just because those two cards exist and because now you can get to them more often, that means that you're going to be able to see a lot, get to those cards and see them a lot more often. The biggest thing I think Cyber Dragons, much like Mermails, have going for them is there's not only is the deck can deck can it likes to go second obviously but it really is effective going first as well with some of the rank five such as Pallades and infinity it can go first if it needs to but it prefers to go second so that's one of the things i really do like is it's it's fun and cyber dragons are a you know it's not a very linear deck in terms of in terms of how you build it there's a lot of flexibility of, of what kind of cards you play obviously there's pretty standard lineup but especially with the new wave of support the deck is getting i actually think cyber dragons would be a deck that i would enjoy playing because i do think they're it's a quite fun in terms of card design so with all that being said about comes to end the video game you guys think is there a deck that you guys think that just won't die and will always be a good metal call that i missed please let me know down in the comment section below and as always like thank you guys for watching so Orstorm, signing out